Good morning and hallelujah, everybody. We are here with another Rob Job Rapid Review, and we are diving into the con topic of valvular disease. When I think of valvular diseases, um, I, we mainly think of them in, in the context of two main valves. It's the mitral valve in between the left atria and the left ventricle, and then the aortic valve that pumps blood into systemic circulation. In terms of the two ways that these uh, valves can become pathologic, the first one is regurgitation, which is more of a volume problem. There's an issue with the uh, structural integrity, integrity of the valve. And the second thing is stenosis, which is calcification or stiffness of that valve. And I usually think of that in the context of a pressure problem. The two mnemonics to like kind of sort these through and like split them into, bifurcate them into two categories. The two mnemonics that I like to use is Mr. Ass and DARMS. So when I think of valvular disease, I think instantly I'm like, is it a Mr. Ass or is it a DARMS? What do those stand for? So Mr. Ass um, refers to the two types of valvular diseases that occur with systolic or contraction. So uh, the S stands for systole, Mr. Ass, mitral regurg, aortic stenosis with systole. Then DARMS. DARMS would be the other two. So DARMS is diastole, aortic regurg, and mitral stenosis. And then the other thing that that D can stand for is that these two types of valvular diseases that occur uh, with diastole also have a decrescendo murmur. Both of those have a decrescendo murmur. So that's the first thing that I like to think about is like, what valvular disease do I have? Is it systolic? Is it diastolic? And then from there, we can start to decipher what type of hypertrophy we're going to get. Is it a pressure or volume problem? Um, we can start thinking about our murmurs. And then eventually, and what we're going to do today is we can draw the pressure volume curve for each. Um, so let's kind of get into this and get into each specific valvular disease here. Let's make sure that my pen is working. Great. All right. So first one on the list is mitral regurge. So instantly, mitral regurge, I'm thinking Mr. Ass, I'm thinking systole. So it's a systolic problem. Regurge tunes me into it's actually going to be volume overload. Um, so with volume overload in that left ventricle, we're going to see what's called dilated or, or eccentric hypertrophy. That's when that left ventricle is actually going to get bigger. The murmur that we hear with mitral regurge is a hollow systolic murmur. So throughout systole, it's just more of like a consistent sound. And then this is actually heard at the apex and radiates to the axilla. So what I like to think about with these murmurs is for the aortic murmurs, we're going to hear them on the upper sternal border. And then for the mitral murmurs, we're going to hear them at the apex of the heart. So let's draw this pressure volume curve. Um, let's just get acquainted here. So this is left ventricle pressure, left ventricle volume. This line over here is end diastolic volume. The top curve is afterload. This corner here is preload. And then this line here is contractility. So again, afterload is how hard that left ventricle has to push to overcome, uh, to eject blood into systemic circulation. So it's like overcoming that pressure. Preload is the volume that fills at the end of diastole, so the maximum filling of that left ventricle, and then contractility is just like the force that's actually used to get that blood into circulation, or afterload, I don't know if I said this before, is more of the resistance, like what do you have to overcome and push in that left ventricle? We really like to, you know, get into it and get real dramatic here. So let's draw, so what will happen if we have mitral regurgitation? So if we have mitral regurgitation during systole, when it's contracting, we have blood shooting back into the left atria. This is a volume problem. So we know with volume problems, we're going to have increased end diastolic volume. So the pressure volume curve for mitral regurg is actually going to start out here. Um, one interesting thing is afterloads actually decreased a little bit because you're going both through the aortic valve and the mitral valve. So that left ventricle does not have to work as hard. And then we're actually going to see, since there is a little bit of a leakage of the mitral valve, we're going to see just a little bit lower of end systolic volume. And then we'll close it here. So this is typically the pressure volume curve that we would see with mitral regurgitation. We have a little bit of decreased afterload. It's a volume problem. We have increased end diastolic volume, so more volume in that left ventricle. And then we do see, since it is pumping more volume out, that end systolic volume is going to be just a little bit less. 
So that is mitral regurge. And what mnemonic do we associate mitral regurge with again? That's right, everybody. Nice job, Mr. Ass. So aortic stenosis, that's the second part of Mr. Ass. We're thinking systole, it's a systolic problem, stenosis. The stiffness of that aortic valve, it's calcified. It um, takes a lot more pressure to actually open the valve and the valve does not open all the way. So that's why we have pressure overload in that left ventricle. When we get pressure overload, we're gonna have a concentric hypertrophy. So that's like the thickening of that septum and that whole ventricle wall. The diamond that we hear with aortic stenosis is a diamond murmur where we get a crescendo and a decrescendo. And then it's heard on the right, right upper sternal border. This is like that really harsh murmur. You're gonna hear it up here. Um, and that's associated with aortic stenosis. This murmur can also radiate up through the carotids. So what will happen with the pressure volume curve of aortic stenosis? Well, the first thing that I like to think about is that end diastolic volume or that end systolic volume. So at the end of contraction is actually going to be more. Why is it gonna be more? It's because that valve doesn't open up all the way. So we can't eject all of that blood out of the left ventricle. So we know that this is going to shift this way. And then we know that it's a pressure problem. We know that that pressure is going to increase because it can't pump all that blood out. So we're gonna see a huge increase in afterload here, folks. Again, the reason why we see that increase in afterload is because that left ventricle has to work really hard to push all that blood out. And then we kind of drop down. Sometimes we will see um, an increase here in end diastolic volume, um, the, depending on how much volume is actually pushing in from that left atria. But the two main hallmarks of this is we're seeing that increase and end systolic volume because we can't get the blood out and then we're seeing that pressure overload. So let's just fill this in. Aren't these fun? So that's how that aortic stenosis curve will be modulated. Now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to aortic regurge. So aortic regurge is happening during diastole. So we eject all that blood, but during diastole, when we're relaxing, blood actually rushes back into the left ventricle. So we're going to see volume overload. It's volume overload with aortic regurgitation. I know that that says pressure problem there with aortic regurgitation, but that's actually a volume problem. So with volume problems, we see eccentric and dilated hypertrophy. The murmur that we see is a decrescendo murmur as the D in DARMS. It's heard in the left upper sternal border, and the way that we differentiate aortic regurgs from mitral stenosis, since they do present in a very similar way, is like when we're hearing it on physical exam, the main thing that we do is we look at the pulse pressure. And if that's wide, um, that tunes us into aortic regurge. So the big thing for aortic regurge here is that we're going to have a massive end diastolic volume. The reason why we're gonna have such, like, such a big a, uh, end diastolic volume is because it, it, during diastole, that blood is just flooding back into the left ventricle. So we're gonna see this is gonna be accentuated here. We're gonna see a little bit of an increase in end systolic volume because it's pumping more blood. And then because there's more volume, there's gonna be more pressure. So we're gonna see a little bit of an increase in afterload as well. Because there's more blood in that left ventricle, um, we gotta use more pressure to get that blood out. So that's why we're gonna see a gradual increase in afterload there. So last but not least, thank you all for sticking with me here. I know this has been quite the marathon and not the most Rob Job rapid review. We're not the most rapid Rob Job rapid review. But we're getting to mitral stenosis here. Mitral stenosis is the stiffening of the mitral valve. So it's having trouble pumping that blood into the left ventricle. So the big thing that I think about here is that it's a diastolic murmur. Since it's stenosis, it's in a pressure problem. We're going to see concentric hypertrophy. That's the thickening hypertrophy. The murmur heard is a decrescendo murmur. It's heard at the apex. And then the big thing with mitral stenosis is if we can't pump as much blood into that left ventricle, we're going to see a decrease in end diastolic volume. And if we have a decrease in end diastolic volume, we're going to have a little decrease in that afterload because we don't have as much blood to pump. So less blood means more pressure. And we are here with our mitral stenosis pressure volume curve. So that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you so much. Again, these are the four common valvular diseases that are tested in nursing school, medical school, um, you name it. And it's just interesting, fascinating stuff. Um, it's kind of a, the confluence of anatomy and physics and cell biology. 
I'm fired up. It's awesome. Just remember the two mnemonics when you're thinking about these diseases are Mr. Ass, mitral regurg aortic stenosis, and DARMS, diastolic aortic regurg mitral stenosis. There we go, everybody. We are out. Over and out.